avant-garde is trendy in 2022? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> the Friday Night Boy, best avant-garde social media out there. Thank you so much, best friend! I'm not even wearing pants, but whatever. Oh, hell no, man. What Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are talking about avant-garde style. Is it trending in 2022? Let's find out. So a friend of mine on Instagram recently reached out to me and asked me if I thought that avant-garde is the new hype beast. So coming up next, I invited some YouTubers, Instagram influencers, TikTok influencers to speak their mind on if avant-garde is trendy in 2022. Let's see what they got. So first up is a good friend of mine, Josh. You might recognize him from YouTube and on Instagram. He is an avant-garde enthusiast like me. He is from Las Vegas, and here are his thoughts. Howdy, I'm Josh. I'm another fashion-centered content creator on YouTube as well as Instagram. All of my handles are wares underscore Galdo. Uh, to answer the specific question of is avant-garde trendy slash hype in 2022, I definitely think the exposure of avant-garde fashion higher than it's ever been before, and I think that's a good thing. Um, that barrier to entry for uh, avant-garde fashion is very, very, very high, simply because a lot of avant-garde styles look so much better paired with other avant-garde styles. But personally, living in Las Vegas, I love avant-garde fashion because it doesn't really exist around where I am. And so that very, very high degree of uniqueness that I get and I feel, it makes me feel that much more confident to go out and show people what I have and what I wear because simply I'm obsessed with the artistry, history, complicatedness that comes with dressing in avant-garde clothing. With all these younger individuals getting exposed to avant-garde fashion, say via like Rick Owens Ramones or Converse Rick Owens and stuff like that, they then can kind of basically go through the gateway and be introduced to a world of avant-garde clothing that is so much more interesting and unique. I think uniqueness is kind of the key word uh, for what exactly I'm trying to say here is the uniqueness and in, it makes me feel like a true individual because no, almost no one around me wears the same thing that I wear or has the same interest that I wear and whenever I find that one other very specific person that is also into the types of brands and clothing and avant-garde clothing that I'm into we then become like instant friends and it is a wonderful, wonderful way to meet very like-minded individuals or people with similar taste. And with the avant-garde niche does come the very, very obvious and common uh, attitude of gatekeeping and elitism within that whole space. And I think that if you are into avant-garde or getting into avant-garde, just see the things that uh, these people are wearing do your research, go ahead and try and appreciate it as much as you possibly can. If you can purchase these items, I would definitely suggest it if it's within your budget, but there is no better feeling than getting a piece in and then looking at it for yourself and finding that whole new appreciation that's completely different from the appreciation that you see through the screen of your computer. Getting the product in hand, feeling the hand feel, seeing how it fits on your body is such a truly unique experience when it comes to avant-garde fashion. And I would say that if you are looking to get into it, simply just exercise your interests and go for it because it is such a freeing experience to look and feel so very, very independently unique. Up next, no stranger to the Rick Owens community incarcerating. Carl is over in Australia, so it'll be interesting to see what their insights are. Now, I think avant-garde is still not in its full exposure yet. I can barely see it in my environment. And even if you go to the shops, you rarely see that avant-garde store that you know that creates this community now that we are in the 2020s we have been seeing a lot of recycled aesthetics people especially young kids nowadays they think it's a vintage trendy thing and to put it simply avant-garde is mainly a philosophy a style philosophy you just don't scroll on instagram and see five people wearing avant-garde and black outfits and be like okay for the next couple of days I'll be like them, I'll copy their style and that's it, end of the story. I think, I feel like I've been seeing that pattern lately. Are they trying to 
be more fluid? Is that the reason? I grew up in a different time. That's why it's called personal style, because personal style is like your mark, your signature, your that's your emblem, your icon. So if you don't have that consistency and your style keeps changing from one aesthetic to another, then I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying it's wrong to to have like 16 style aesthetics. I do know that for you to flourish your personal style, you have to you have to dedicate yourself around it. I also feel like avant-garde is being used and highlighted as a flex to be different. Do see a lot of people try it, try avant-garde fashion, mainly because they think it's cool and they want to be cool and they want to be different and experimental for for a hot minute. And one thing that I can also say is how avant-garde can still be inaccessible to many. When we went to Berlin and visited this really cool store that sells avant-garde fashion, we have felt how inaccessible avant-garde can be. Like the prices are astronomically expensive. So maybe yes, avant-garde isn't for everyone. Avant-garde may not be as welcoming. You can still feel the exclusivity of avant-garde in some aspects. Yeah, right now Rick Owens is at the forefront of becoming a household avant-garde brand, right? Like yes, we see people admiring Rick Owens and they may love the idea of looking cool in Rick Owens, but they may be the same people who would laugh at, you know, a Comme des Garçons runway show. Do you know what I mean? And as we become more digital, a lot of people on social media wanted to create a, a bigger voice, a stronger branding, a stronger personal style. Hence, there is a lot of people becoming more and more interested in avant-garde as a way of trying to be different. I think that's the simplest rationale why we are seeing a lot of people trying to be more experimental with fashion. And I just hope that avant-garde is not considered as just another trend that people would would try for, for five seconds and then move on to the next trend. It will not be a trend because it's not a trend. It's a sartorial philosophy. The direction that social media is heading lately, it's all about what is on trend, which is the antithesis of avant-garde itself. So to put it as a trend, it's very self-defeating. It's very ironic. And I think it's wrong. So for me, avant-garde is still niche. Up next, all the way from Canada, the TikTok sensation, Liam Sibley. This guy is hilarious. You guys need to follow him on TikTok. He's been featured on a lot of pages. One of the funniest guys I know, Liam. Take it away, buddy. What's going on, guys? My name is Liam. Um, I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, if you've never heard of Toronto. <laughs> Excuse my terrible setup here. I'm kind of doing this last minute. I'm not even wearing pants, but whatever. I also just filmed this whole thing, and then when I checked it after my phone, uh, the storage was full, so I got to do it all over again. Love that. But yeah, we're going to talk about avant-garde in 2022. Is the popularity rising? So for me, I got into avant-garde, I guess not really that long ago. Probably started kind of uh, dressing more in this style, probably around like 2017. So my insights will probably be a little bit different than people that have been in it for a long time, like the OGs and whatever. As for Toronto, I have some friends that are in the 30s. They've been in the scene much longer than I have. What they have told me is that the avant-garde style definitely was a lot more popular years ago. Like, um, I heard that, you know, brands like Boris used to sell very well. These days, it's definitely not as popular. Also with Toronto, we don't really have that many people that are, that dress like avant-garde. I would say the fashion scene here is, is pretty small. I don't know, we, we probably have like a handful of people um they all kind of know each other for the most part so yeah it, it's not it's definitely not like a huge scene it's not really comparable to like new york or places in europe where the fashion scene is, is far more prominent so yeah toronto is pretty small but yeah with with social media i would say it's def everything is obviously far more accessible so you do get a lot of like younger people that are kind of discovering these designers and they probably wouldn't have if they didn't have access to TikTok, Instagram, whatever. And I think there's there's definitely 
pros and cons to it. A lot of people have been discovering Rick Owens due to artists like Playboy Cardi, Destroy Lonely, but I don't know all of these guys because I, I don't really listen to them. Yeah, artists like that, I know they talk about Rick Owens and Raf Simmons and stuff. I, I think it can be good and it can be not so good, not to sound like an elitist. But yeah, I mean, like younger people find out about these brands and that's really cool because they're able to discover these things at a younger age, younger than I did for sure. So they're kind of getting a head start to the whole thing. They're doing their research and they're gonna be able to develop their style earlier, which gives them more time to kind of mature their style. And then, you know, down the road, maybe their style is gonna be amazing. It's gonna be incredible because they were granted so much time to develop it. But then there's some other people that maybe hear about these brands and then they, they look at it. Here, I'll give like an example that I've seen. So Rick Owens on his page, he shared a picture of a guy like pissing into his own mouth. I've heard that Rick Owens maybe has a piss fetish. I don't know if that's true. I wouldn't really be surprised. You know, there was, there was a lot of people who thought it was kind of funny and there was definitely a lot of people that were totally not cool with it. And they're commenting like, yo, this is so sus. I need to unfollow this. What the fuck is this shit? And I just kind of think like, if that kind of stuff makes you really uncomfortable, maybe this is not the brand or the designer for you. Like that is, is a little bit more on the extreme side, but even like Rick Owens and Tyrone Dillon, you know, kind of read between the lines there. Like if that whole situation makes you uncomfortable, you probably should not be looking at Rick Owens stuff. Like this isn't the designer for you you need to have a little bit more of an open mind. But people who do have an open mind and come into it and they discover it at an earlier age, that's great. And then they're gonna discover a whole bunch of really cool stuff. So there's definitely two sides to the coin. Yeah, it really just depends on who you are. I would say in Toronto, it's, it's probably not as popular now as it used to be. Who knows, maybe with uh, social media, it's gonna be on the rise again. As for the rest of the world, hey, I'll see the rest of the video and see what everybody else is saying about it. I'm definitely curious to see these young people that are discovering these really cool designers and seeing what they do with it and how their style develops over time. Last but certainly not least, a good friend of mine, you might know him from the Retail Therapy Podcast, all the way over from New York, XR. What's up everyone? It's your boy 070XR on Instagram. First of all, big shout out to the Friday Night Boy for inviting me onto the fucking channel. I really appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a fun discussion. So is avant-garde trending in 2022? First, I wanna say that I think my perspective is a little bit different because I do live in New York City. So, you know, the things that I see here in New York are obviously gonna be a lot different than what someone sees in Middle America. Um, and before we get into avant-garde fashion specifically, I think it'd be a good thing to define how I personally dress and how that fits into the narrative. So I would consider my style very uniform, very grungy. Um, I wear a lot of blacks, a lot of boots, a lot of leather jackets, flannels, cardigans. And I'm really inspired by grunge. I'm really inspired by slimmer silhouettes. Uh, you know, I wear a lot of boots, like I mentioned. And I think that's important because some people would consider my style avant-garde adjacent, although I don't personally. Um, I think that the pipeline for somebody like me getting into avant-garde is a lot more prevalent because of footwear uh, specifically. So somebody like me dressed in all black, you get into wearing boots and you know, what's the first thing you buy, right? You buy like a pair of Gweedies or something. Uh, next thing you know, you're buying Andy Milamistri, right? Next thing you know, you're buying fucking Rick and you know, you're buying CCP. Um, so while I wouldn't consider my style avant-garde by any means, I do think that it's easier for somebody like me to go down that rabbit hole. Now, in terms of avant-garde fashion, specifically in New York, I think it's definitely trending. I think it has been trending for a while. Um, and I specifically think that because of one designer, and that's Rick Owens. When you go to Soho on a busy Saturday or a busy Sunday, you are going to see lines outside of the Rick Owens store. Rick Owens is huge, right? And if you look at even in the culture too, people who gravitate towards streetwear not only know who Rick Owens is because of rappers like Little Uzi Vert, Playboy Cardi, but they wear Rick Owens. And I think Dark Shadow specifically is a good gateway for people to get into avant-garde fashion. You see a lot of Ramones in New York City from people who are wearing ALD and then they'll have a pair of Ramones on feet. 
uh, you'll see a lot of creeper boots, for example. And I think Rick specifically is responsible and the culture around Rick Owens is responsible for getting people more into avant-garde fashion. And the thing is that like once somebody's in that rabbit hole just a little bit, it's easier for them to look into brands uh, like Mainline Rick, for example, and Demi Lemaitre. Um, and even further down the avant-garde rabbit hole, right? From there, you can go into Yoji. You can go into John Alexander Skelton, for example, right? Like, it just takes that one first step. And I think for a lot of people in New York, especially if you're into fashion, you at least know who Rick Owens is. You at least know what Rick is somewhat about. And it's easier for you to take that plunge because of footwear. It kind of goes back to what I was saying with my style too. Footwear is the main catalyst for people going down uh, more designer rabbit holes, in my opinion. So all that being said, what do I think 2023 looks like? Well, like I said, I think my perspective is unique because I am in New York, but I think it will, it will continue to trend, right? If you go to any fashion meme page, there's fucking Rick memes everywhere, right? Rick Owens is in the culture. So as we continue to see that, we're going to continue to see more and more people in the streetwear ecosystem specifically get more into avant-garde fashion. Now, do I think avant-garde is particularly accessible? Not really. The prices for a lot of these brands are really high. Um, it's not, you know, the most accessible thing to wear, especially if you're not in a fashion forward city, right? This is something that the Friday Night Boy and I have talked about a lot, especially if you're in a place that isn't as accepting to openness in terms of how you dress. But at least in the bigger cities, you are seeing it uh, pop off. You are seeing it become more popular. And I think you're going to continue to see that. I think it goes back to brands like Rick Owens. Um, like I said, brands like Andy Milamistra. And then from there, you're opening up your, yourself to a world of possibilities. So that's basically all I had to say on the matter. Yes, Avant Garde is trending in 2022. I do think it's geography specific. And I do think it will continue to trend in 2023, depending on where you're at. But yeah, my Instagram, 070XR, if you want to give me a follow. I also have a podcast that I host with my boy Dylan, the Retail Therapy Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Retail Therapy Pod. Uh, and you can listen to our episodes on any podcast platform we have, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google, anything. Uh, yeah, appreciate the Friday Night Boy for inviting me. Anytime you want me on, man, always happy to chop it up. Love talking about clothes. I love you all. Stay safe, stay healthy. As Josh always says, peace. Thank you so much to everyone who sent me their insights on this topic. You guys need to check them all out. I'll be sure to link their information down below. For me personally, trendy means you see it all over the place. How I gauge this is if I see a lot of younger people wearing it. For example, if I see younger people maybe in that age of like 18 to 24 wearing a lot of flares and vintage, then I would say, okay, kind of vintage or 70s look is trending right now, which is what I see in my area. I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I see a ton of this. So for me, I would say that style is very trendy. Is avant-garde trending in 2022 in fashion online? I would say I think everything is trending online right now. There's so much short-form content out there, and it's really easy for a fashion creator to show what they've got, and it's easy to go viral, I'd say, right now. So a lot of these styles that are being pushed out into your Explore page are sometimes seen as trendy. I see all different styles in men's fashion and in women's, and I think men's fashion is at an all-time high right now. So a lot of styles are trending, not just avant-garde. Just because you see it online doesn't mean you see it out in the open or in the real world. Where I am, like I said, I live in North Carolina, I don't see anybody who dresses like me. Every time I go somewhere, I pretty much stick out and people always ask me what I'm wearing, who am I wearing, what designer is that, why do I dress like this? So for me personally, I don't think it's trending in my area. I don't think it's trending in 2022. I think if you're into fashion and you look at a lot of fashion social media, then yeah, you'll see it along with all other styles. So that being said, do I want it to be trending? Of course, I would love it for other people to experience the designers that I wear. I would love it for other people to appreciate what I'm wearing and make it more popular. 
yes, I think there are pros and cons to this. So I would love for these designers to get more appreciation, if that makes sense. So that's going to wrap up the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Help me out. Give me a subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment. I would love to hear everyone's thoughts. Thank you once again. Have a great day.